Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the lighting notebook. And the node that we're looking at in this video is the light filter library node. Right, once again, this node is a LARP level node. So we can go over and switch to the Solaris desktop and go over to the stage level. Over here, once again, same scene as we've had in the previous videos. This time we have no lights set up. What I want to show you in this video is how to add light filters to particular lights. So let's just go ahead and add a light into the scene. If we just go ahead and tab in a light, we can place it right over here and we'll just have to move it around until we can see it. All right, so currently it is just a point light. We can change this to a rectangle. Now on this node's parameters, right at the bottom under its base properties, you will see light filters. Now there's more than one way of using a light filter. So I'm going to firstly drop a light filter library right over here. We can drop it before our light, but I'll also show you how to do it where it's after our light. So we just plug it in over here and we can dive inside. And over here, let's use a gel. So a karma light filter gel, basically just the color. So we're going to make this say red, and then we can call this red underscore gel, go up a level. And on our light over here, where we have the light filters under our base properties, we can just go over here and you'll see that it's added this light filters. That's what that light filter library has done. It's added our filters over here. So we can just select that red gel. And as you can see, it's now applied to our light. If we go into our library, we can now make changes to this. So the benefit of this is that we can actually do this for more than one light. So let's say that we have two lights over here and let's just move this one over here and let's increase this one's exposure. So this one's brighter. What's really cool about these filters is that they can affect multiple lights. So you can see over here that if we increase the saturation, they'll both be affected because they both share this filter, right? Light one and light two both share the same filter. You can also do things like adjusting the exposure for both of them. And basically this is just a different way of working with lights. You can now apply filters to multiple lights or have multiple filters. So if we duplicate this over, let's call this one blue underscore gel, change this to something like blue, go up level, and on light two, we can now select that filter instead, right? So we're applying different filters to different lights. Now, I'm just going to remove these two lights and this light library and show you one more thing. So I'm just going to place an area light facing our geometry, going to increase its intensity and its exposure. Okay, so we just have that. Now, what happens if you want to do a projector type effect? Well, this is one of the other filters that we have access to. So once again, we're gonna do a light filter library, dive inside and inside of here, if we just type filter, we can see the different filters that we have. Attenuation is for light fall off. Barn door is for controlling how narrow a beam of light is. Then we also have these two over here. Now, Gobo is a really interesting one. So we're gonna grab Gobo over here and we can just call this something like logo underscore stencil underscore Gobo. And all a Gobo is, is something to block light. So if we use this on our light, it's going to change the way our light emits. It's basically cutting out areas and causing certain areas of the light to not emit. I have these two textures. This one over here is just our logo and this is a stencil, right? So black represents where we don't want light and white represents where we do want light. So I'm just going to use that over here under the texture for this gobo. Now, this hasn't been applied to our lights just yet. The way that we've applied it before is perfectly fine, but you will see that if we try and find it over here with the light filters, it won't actually show up because it's being applied after our light. Instead, we can go to our light filter library, say auto for light filters, assigned to light. And over here, we can just assign it to a specific light. So area light one, just like that. Now you'll see that it's sort of working, but not exactly. And that's for a couple of reasons. So firstly, I'm going to tilt this up a bit so that you can see it against the background. But one of the main issues is actually our width and height of our area light. Over here, if we decrease the width and height to 0.1, it will work a lot better, but we are going to have to also push up the exposure and intensity. Alternatively, we can use normalized power, which causes our light to be the same brightness regardless of its size. So this is a useful thing to do when you're reducing the size of your light over here. The reason we do this is just for a crisper projection. If we were to push this up, you can see that it starts to blur out a little, which is fine if that's what you want, but we're going to reduce it to something like that. I can see that I can actually project this light however I want. Right, so this area light is projecting that light. Now, of course, you can add other filters over here. For example, we can still reintroduce that filter that we had earlier with the gel. So we can call this color underscore gel. And this one over here, let's just give it some color, right? Red or something. Then over here, we say auto full. It'll add this one at the bottom, and then we can assign this to the light as well. 
So this will be assigned to our area light, and now it should be red. But what happens if we have a particular color that we want to apply to this? Well, I have another image over here, which is just the color version of the stencil that I'm using for the gobo. So over here, this one has this red line through the center, and we can actually use this. But if we dive inside here and we take a look at this, there's no actual input for a texture. So you may think to use an MTLX image, right? MTLX image, go ahead, grab our color, plug it into the tint, and it doesn't actually work. The reason is we're applying this image without any respect for UVs. It doesn't actually know how to generate this image because technically our light doesn't have UVs. Now over here, this one is doing it internally. So when we feed it this map, it's sorting out the UVs for us. But if we want to be using this light filter, we're going to have to use a projection. So we're going to use the Karma light filter projection over here. And all we have to do is just plug our UVs into the texture coordinate. And there we have it, right? You can now see that the red is being projected as we wanted it to be projected. So here you go, you can just tilt that up and that works. And of course you can do cool things like adding a Karma Fog Box. What that'll do is just add some volumetrics. So over here, Karma Fog Box. Increase its size, uniform scale of 20, decrease its density, and you just end up with that sort of thing. So that's all for this video. I do hope that this helped you to understand how light filters work how we can create a light filter library and either apply the filters after we've created our lights or before if we drag this light filter library before it. It's very easy to just go onto our light over here and tell it which light filters to use. Right, just like that. So we have more than one option of how to apply filters to our lights. But that's all for this video. I do hope that this was helpful. So thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.